Hello friends, in the last video, we have seen how to apply Newton's first law in case of two-dimensional equilibrium and we have applied for a Cartesian coordinate that is horizontal and vertical. So we have written two equations, one along the x-axis, another along the y-axis and we solve for unknowns. Now in this session, we will see how to apply two-dimensional equilibrium equation for Newton's first law in case of a inclined plane. So let us discuss all this using a problem. So this problem says a car of weight W rests on a slanted ramp attached to a trailer. So this is the trailer and this is the car and this is the ramp. So this car is resting on this ramp and this is attached to a trailer by a cable. So only a cable running from the trailer to the car prevents the car from rolling off the ramp. So this is the only cable that basically supports rolling of the car from this ramp. So all the forces is taken by this cable only. There is no any other force that is acting in this system. This means you have to ignore the friction between tire and the ramp. So there is no friction between tire and the ramp. No friction between tire and the ramp. It is also said the car's brake are off. So car is not the, the car is not applying any brake. So car brake is off. And its instant its, its transmission is in neutral. So your car can be a forward gear or it can be a backward gear or it can be in neutral gear. So this car is in neutral gear. Now we have to find the tension in the cable. So this cable, what is the tension we have to find? Let's call this tension is T. And we have to find the force that ramp exerts on the car's tire. So what is the force that ramp exerts on the car's tire that we have, we have to find? Basically in this case, ramp will exert a force that is normal to the uh, uh, this ramp and similarly here also you will have some uh, normal force. So what we will do is, we will club all these two normal to a single normal and we will call this as a normal force N in this case. So we'll say only a single normal force is acting in this direction. So we have to find this normal force. So in this case, there are two unknowns or two target variable. So what are target variables? So target variables in this case is tension in the cable and normal force applied by the ramp. And in this case, we will assume there is no friction between tire and the ramp. So we will assume there is no friction. So there is no friction. So there are two unknown, that is two target variables and we have to solve. So this means at least we need to have two independent equations. So what is required in this case, we require two independent equations. So we require two independent equations. Now how do you write equation? The first step is to draw the free body diagram. So let us draw the free body diagram of this uh, car. So what are the forces that is acting on this car? The first is weight of the car that will act in the downward direction. So let us denote this car using a point and there is a weight that is acting in the downward direction. What other forces are acting? So let's say this is my ramp. So this dotted line shows the ramp and this is the horizontal line that makes an angle alpha and on this car what are other forces? One is normal reaction because on this tire we will have a normal reaction, on this tire we will have a normal reaction. But what we are saying is we are basically combining all these normal reaction and we will show only one normal reaction. So this normal reaction will somewhere here. Now this normal reaction will be perpendicular to the ramp. So this is a normal reaction 
and the direction is perpendicular to this ram. What other forces is acting? You have this cable. So this cable is applying tension force T. So there is a force that is acting in this direction and this force is due to the cable and the magnitude of this force is T. Is there any other force that is acting? So you check before proceeding further you have to check whether any other forces are acting on this system or not that is on the car. No other forces. Let us think about friction. As I said earlier, there is no friction. We are assuming that there is no friction. So friction is also absent. So we are making an assumption that is there is no friction in this case. Tire and ram. There is no friction between tire and ram. Now we have to solve for normal reaction and tension. You can solve this problem in either Cartesian coordinate that is horizontal x-axis and vertical y-axis but to simplify the problem there is another approach what we can do is we can think of x-axis in this direction that is my x-axis is parallel to the ram that is parallel to inclined plane and y-axis will be perpendicular to this ram so y-axis will be in this direction. So this is my y-axis and this is my x-axis. So now this angle is how much? This angle is alpha, then this angle will also be alpha. This I said many times, there is a theorem in mathematics that says angle between line is equals to angle between perpendiculars. On this line, this is the perpendicular and this line this is the perpendicular so this angle is basically alpha so this angle is alpha so now i have to break or i have to take the component of forces along x and y direction and then i have to write equilibrium equations so what will be the component of w in this direction so in this direction, this angle is alpha. So this will be W cos alpha. And what about in this direction? In this direction, W will have a component that is W sin alpha. Let us put a bigly sign here on this W to show that now this W has been resolved in W cos alpha and W sin alpha and whenever we are writing equation we don't have to consider this because we have already taken the effect of this W as two components W sin alpha and W cos alpha. We don't have to take the component of tension because tension is along the x axis and normal reaction is along the y axis. So we don't have to take the component of tension and normal reaction. This is the advantage of using this coordinate. The coordinate x is along the parallel that is along the incline and y is along the perpendicular to the incline. So this is one of the major advantages. We will later see what happens if you take Cartesian coordinate. But before that, let us try to solve this problem. So this is a two-dimensional equilibrium there are two unknown we have to write two equation first we will write equation in the equilibrium equation along the x direction so what are the forces that is acting along the x direction tension that is a positive and then i have to consider this w sin alpha that is acting in the negative x side so by, we have to write minus w sin alpha and sum of all the forces is equals to zero because this car is in equilibrium so from here i can say t is equals to w sine alpha so we have solved for t and w is known alpha is known so we can calculate t in terms of w and alpha Similarly, we can write equation or equilibrium equation along the y-axis and we can write sum of all the forces along the y-axis is equals to zero and this will give me normal reaction that is along the y-axis. So this will be positive quantity plus W cos alpha that is along the negative direction of y-axis. So we have to write minus W cos alpha 
and sum of these two forces is equals to zero. From here, I can write n is equals to w cos alpha. So now we have calculated two unknowns, that is tension and normal reaction. Now consider a special case of alpha. So let's say two special cases we can consider. First is alpha is equals to zero degree. So when alpha is equals to zero degree, what will the value of T sin alpha sin zero that is zero. So this is T is equals to zero. And what will be the value of normal reaction? Normal reaction will be W cos 0 that is equals to W times 1. So this is equals to W. So when alpha is equals to 0 degree, this means what? This means your car is simply resting on a horizontal plane. So your car is resting on a horizontal plane and this cable is simply attached. So in this case, this makes sense because this cable is not going to take any tension and that's why this tension is zero and all the forces that is normal reaction will take all the forces that is the bait so normal reaction will be equal to the bait so in case of alpha is equals to zero degree this makes sense now what about if alpha is equals to 90 degree alpha is equals to 90 degree in that case t will be because t is w sin alpha sin 90 degrees 1 so t is equals to w and what about n in this case n will be cos 90 is 0 so this is 0 now how this will look if alpha is equals to 90 degree this means your car is hanging something like this in this case you can expect because this is not a uh, touching to the plane or you can say this is simply touching your your plane inclined plane will become something like this so in this case all the bait is taken by the tension so in this case you can say tension is equals to w and normal reaction because this is just a parallel plane it is not applying a force perpendicular to the uh, this car that's why normal reaction will be zero in this case so these two uh, special cases are sometimes useful to check whether the answer that you have got is right or not. Sometimes in objective question you can use this as a trick. You can put this a uh, special cases and you can find the answer directly. Now if you want you can solve the same problem in Cartesian coordinate also. But that will basically increase your calculation. So let us try to illustrate this. So what we will do is we will solve this problem using a Cartesian coordinate just to illustrate how the complication arises, how the calculation uh, increases. So this is your car and the force is acting is W and in this direction you have tension force and this is the normal reaction and this is your inclined plane and this angle is alpha. Now, if this angle is alpha, then this angle is also alpha. Now, this is, let us put this somewhere here. So, this is my x-axis and this is my y-axis. So, if this angle is alpha, then this angle is 90 minus alpha and this angle is alpha. You can prove yourself. Now, if I want to solve this problem in x, y coordinate as shown in the figure, that is the Cartesian coordinate. Now, what I have to do is I have to break. I have to take the component of the forces along the x axis and along the y axis. So, this is my x axis and this is my y axis. So, what are the forces that I have to take the component? First component of T along this axis, this will be T cos alpha and along this axis I will have T sin alpha and now I can make a big list sign over this this means now this has been considered similarly I have to take the component of n so along this side I will have n cos alpha so this angle is alpha so this will be simply 
n cos alpha and along this direction I will have n sin alpha. So this is n sin alpha. So this is n sin alpha. And we can make a big list sign over here so that to understand that this has been taken into account. Now let us write equation of motion. But before that you see we have taken component of normal reaction and also we have taken component of tension along the x-axis and along the y-axis. This increases the calculation because you see in the previous case you have to take the component of only one force that is W. In this case you have to take the component component of two forces normal reaction and tension. But still we can solve this problem. So summation of fx is equal to 0 that is the total forces acting along the x-axis is equal to 0 because object is in equilibrium. So along the x-axis we have t cos alpha and then we have n sin alpha that is negative side of the x-axis. So this becomes minus n sin alpha and then this is equal to 0. So from here I can write t cos alpha is equal to n sin alpha. So this is my equation number 1. Similarly, we can write equilibrium equation along the y axis that is summation of Fy is equal to 0. So what are the forces that is acting along the y axis? One force is n cos alpha and t sin alpha that is along the y axis and it is positive. So we can write n cos alpha plus t sin alpha and then there is a force that is acting along the negative direction of y axis. So this is minus w and sum of all the forces is equals to 0. So from here I can write n cos alpha plus t sin alpha is equals to w. So this is my equation 2. Now from equation 1 let us eliminate uh, we can eliminate n. So we can write n is equals to t cos alpha divided by sin alpha. So from 1 I can write n is equals to t cos alpha and this divided by sin alpha. So let us plug this in equation 2. So I can write n cos alpha. So basically I have to write n so n is nothing but t cos alpha divided by sin alpha multiplied by cos alpha plus t sin alpha is equals to w. Furthermore, I can write t cos square alpha plus this is this will become t sin square alpha and this divided by sin alpha this is equals to w and now we know that cos square alpha plus sin square alpha is equals to 1 so this is simply t divided by sin alpha is equals to w so from here i can write t is equals to w sin alpha so I know t similarly if I plug into this equation I can get n. n is nothing but t is w sin alpha and then multiply by cos alpha divided by sin alpha. So n is basically w cos alpha. So here I can write n is equals to w cos alpha. So this is w cos alpha. So you see, we can solve the same problem using a Cartesian co coordinate. But the problem is, in this case, calculation becomes lengthy. And unnecessarily, uh, there is a chance of mistake that increases. So it is always advisable to consider an inclined plane problem into a axis that is perpendicular to the inclined plane and another axis that is parallel to the inclined plane. I hope you have liked this video and if you like this please share and 
uh, like also you can comment in the comment box and i will see you in the next video thank you